All right. So we're going to look at a couple things today. We're going to look at uh, cooking methods, because some cooking methods are better than others. Uh, ingredients and substitutes, and then we're going to look a little bit at meal planning, because that is all a part of health, health, heart healthy cooking process. The main heart healthy cooking methods are baking, broiling, microwaving, poaching, steaming, and grilling. Uh, roasting and light stir frying also, especially when we roast the meat up off on up, up off the bottom of the pan, you know, on a rack or um, if you use some vegetables or something like that to get it up off, allowing the fat to drain away. Um, also lightly stir frying or sauteing with a cooking spray or broth, um, a little bit of olive oil or canola oil. The cooking methods that we are going to want to avoid are going to be those that add extra additional fats. So deep frying, roasting, and pan frying. A lot of people are confused about roasting. They don't think it's nearly as bad as deep frying, but it's basically frying under pressure. Frying under pressure. Yes, so it is deep fried, in essence. All right, um, ingredients. You know, the ingredients certainly are gonna make a difference. Uh, so we're gonna talk about all of the different ingredient categories. We're gonna talk first about fats and oils, meats and proteins. We're gonna look at some seasonings breads and grains, and then our dairy products. So fats and oils. Um, we need fat in our diet. We don't need to go completely fat free. Uh, our diets should actually contain around 25 to 30 percent of our calories from fat. Okay. Now most of that kind of fat, uh, it should be uh, from monounsaturated or uh, polyunsaturated, our liquid oils, um, and not so much from solid fats. So we're going to talk about the differences between all of those fats, because they're not all equal. All right, so good fats. Uh, monounsaturated fats. This is going to be the olive oil, the canola oil, uh, avocados have this kind of oil, peanuts. Um, a lot of different nut oils are going to fall within the monounsaturated fat category. And these are the ones we want to use most often because they're the ones that have, are best for our heart health. Um, they have the, the nicest effect on our cholesterol levels, I guess, is, is why they have such a good rep. All right, polyunsaturated fats are um, very common in our diets. They're in most of our processed foods, but they're also uh, vegetable oils, sunflower oils, canola oils, soybean oil, that's what vegetable oil is normally. Um, some nuts and seeds contain these, so like your walnuts, um, pine nuts, and those nuts in particular are going to be high in omega-3, okay? So who's heard of omega-3s? Anybody? Fish oils, flaxseed oil? Okay, so those kinds of oils are considered anti-inflammatory, the omega-3s. The omega-6s are the ones that are inflammatory, okay? Um, that's more like your vegetable oil, your sunflower oil, your corn oil. So we, you tend to get a lot of those omega-6s and less the omega-3s. So we really try, need to try to get more of those omega-3s in. So that's where fatty fish come in. Salmon, which we're going to use today. Uh, albacore tuna. Uh, mackerel. There's a couple others. Herring, sardines. Um, I'm not sure if I'm missing anybody. SMASH is the acronym that I like to use. Uh, so those we are supposed to try to get at least twice, uh, twice a week. We're supposed to try to get a serving of fatty fish. Most of us don't get that. Um, and then the other thing we're supposed to get to get all of our omega-3s, the right combination of those, is we're supposed to get a source of a plant source. So uh, like a flaxseed oil or uh, ground flaxseed, walnuts, pine nuts, that kind of thing. The bad fats, and I hate labeling anything as bad fats because certainly all foods we can have within moderation, but these are the ones that have more of a bad effect on our cholesterol levels. Uh, they tend to raise the bad LDL level and um, they may at times, especially trans fat, have a bad impact on our good cholesterol level, that HDL. So that's why we are going to want to limit our saturated fat intake. So this is fats that come from animal products. So butter, lard, whole milk dairy products, um, fatty meats, okay? Then um, trans fat is again, get as little as possible of the trans fat because this is the one that has that double whammy effect. You know, not only does it 
affect our LDL by raising it. It can impact our HDL by lowering it. So we're getting further and further apart in that good ratio that we need. All right, so that would be usually margarine, especially your hard stick margarines. Um, most of your softer tub margarines are trans fat free now. They didn't used to be, um, but most of them have switched. Uh, shortening, so like your Crisco's and stuff like that. And uh, convenience food items. So a lot of those things that we buy that are pre-made, those are gonna be definitely high. So what is the question, I get this all the time, butter or margarine, because they were both on the bad list, right? Um, there, there really is no easy answer to the question. We really uh, need to try to limit our, we need to limit our saturated fat intake, and that includes butter. Uh, also, we need to limit our, um, try or avoid our saturated or trans fat intake. So um, neither one is a great choice. The best choice is to use a non-hydrogenated spread or to use liquid oils whenever possible. So our olive oil or canola oil are really gonna be our best choices. But when we do want something to just spread on a piece of bread or toast, um, we do have options like Smart Balance, Promise, uh, things like that, especially if we're gonna be doing it very frequently. If we're not gonna do it very often, then certainly it might be okay to do something like uh, a butter every once in a while, okay? Uh, fat substitutes. We can use all kinds of tricky fat substitutes in our recipes. So when you're looking at a recipe, um, maybe you can use some of these tips to make it a little bit healthier. So uh, fruit purees. Has anybody heard of adding applesauce to like a cake mix or a banana bread? You know, that's certainly a way to decrease the calories um, and the fat in your recipe. So you can use fruit purees like applesauce, bananas, potatoes. Uh, you can sometimes even use like a, a non-fat yogurt, uh, Greek yogurt, anything like that. Um, usually the substitution is one to one. So if you're using, if the recipe calls for a half a cup of oil, you can usually use the same half a cup of applesauce. Um, it doesn't work in all recipes. You can't do it in all recipes. Um, they may not come out exactly right. Uh, but you can do it in a lot of them, especially for quick breads, muffins, and cakes. Um, also, if your recipe calls for a solid fat like butter, um, you can sometimes use a little less of a liquid oil. So two thirds of a cup of a liquid oil like canola oil um, you can, can be utilized. But again, in some recipes you're gonna have texture changes. So you do have to watch that. Most of those foods that we really have to have butter in or a solid fat in, those are the foods that we need to be limiting in our diets anyway. So. All right, uh, shortening your lard, uh, you can substitute for usually the same amount of canola oil or olive oil. And again, some texture changes may occur, okay? Uh, you do wanna start out sometimes by substituting only half of it first, and then, you know, if that worked out, then you might go the extra mile and maybe substitute all of it, okay? Uh, we wanna choose leaner meats. And we're going to be utilizing some of these lean meats today. Yep, tonight I have some boneless, skinless chicken breasts uh, along with the, uh, the salmon tonight. Nice. So. All right, so the lean cuts are going to, uh, beef are going to be the loin. So sirloin, tenderloin, ground round. Um, this is where filet mignon would fall. Um, but unfortunately, things like prime rib and T-bone steaks fall into the higher fat cuts. You can see that pretty easily when you're in the grocery store and you look at the marbleization of the meat. You can tell whether it's gonna be a lean item or not. Um, but this will help, look for loin. Again, with pork, it's gonna be something very similar. Uh, the loin are going to be much more lean than the other parts of the, of the pork. So uh, ham also, Canadian bacon, they are lean, but they are high in salt. So we still need to watch those. High fat cuts, bacon, spare ribs, sausage, brats, all of those things we really like in Wisconsin. Yeah, and be careful of the pre-packaged, yeah. like the, uh, I see the pork tenderloin up there. A lot yes. of those you'll see in the store that's already marinated in mm -hmm. the package. Careful of those, try to steer away from those, even though they're, they taste good it's because there, there's so much sodium put into them. You're better off getting the, uh, getting the plain ones and seasoning yourself. Yeah, 
definitely. That can also be the case for poultry. Who's seen the marinated chicken breasts in the store? Um, they taste really good, but they're full of salt. So um, not just the marinated ones, but sometimes even the fresh chicken breasts are uh, pumped full of salt. So you do want to make sure you try to find one that says that it doesn't have any additives or any sodium solution added. Uh, white meat or dark meat of the poultry are fine. Um, and poultry includes both chicken and turkey or any bird that we're going to be eating, I would guess. Um, and the only thing we really need to do is hold the skin and, of course, make sure that we're using the appropriate cooking methods. Fish and seafood. These are, again, all great choices. Um, even the fattier fish, like the salmon, the tuna, the mackerel, um, those are still wonderful choices and are leaner than most cuts of beef and sometimes even poultry. So we can certainly consume as much fish as we like as long as we are utilizing the proper cooking method and not, or not dipping in a butter. <laughs> Sometimes that happens too. Uh, just a little quick note there about shrimp. Um, shrimp is high in cholesterol, but it's actually still very low in fat. So it, it can be eaten once a week um, without probably any real effect on your cholesterol levels. All right, I get this question quite often. Um, when you're in the hospital, a lot of times we will put you on a cardiac diet and we will tell you no more eggs, okay? Um, a lot of studies have been coming out lately that have, um, have shown that eggs may not do a whole lot to our cholesterol levels. But the recommendations are still out there that we really should um, limit to three to four whole eggs a week. Some physicians will say one a day um, so that would be seven in a whole week. But most of your studies are saying that eggs may have something special in them that may not cause your, your cholesterol levels to go up. It may be uh, the other kinds of foods like those saturated fats and trans fats that we're consuming that's going to have the biggest impact. Do we need to get started with some cooking? Sure. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do first while we're still talking, I'm going to start the steamer. Uh, this is a steamer I picked up at the store. It's about $15. Uh, real convenient for at home. Throw some veggies in here, a little bit of water in the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on to about 15 minutes. That's all it takes. Uh, there, there are fresh cauliflower, broccoli, and carrots in there. And uh, we're just going to let that go while we're still talking. So by the time we're ready, it's going to be, it's going to be done. So you can do that at home if you're planning your, the rest of your meal and cooking the rest of your meal. You can put your veggies in here and not worry about them. Just set it on the counter, turn it on, and by the time you're done with either your stir fry or grilling your salmon, you're gonna be set with your vegetables. So a real handy, real handy item. What other things can we use <coughs> if we don't have a steamer? Uh, if you don't have a steamer, you can uh, steam vegetables in a, in a saute pan with a little water and cover it on, on low on the stove. You can do them in the microwave in a microwave safe container, a little bit of water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, steaming. At home? You I, I sometimes use one of those baskets that I can sit inside of a pot. Okay, mm -hmm. basket on top of the uh, boiling water on top of the stove. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, with the microwave though, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of those pre-done frozen packages that you can find in the store uh, that, that can go right into the microwave. Some of those are loaded with butter and salt and some type of sauce uh, just so they can you know taste better uh, mm -hmm. but we can we can find uh, different uh, fresh herbs or salt free seasonings from the store there's a lot of new uh, salt free salt free blends coming out uh, mrs. dash and things like that Laurie's is making quite a few different blends that are salt free that uh, experiment with and uh, yeah, you can use them on your veggies too. Mm -hmm. All right. Do we need to get started with anything else, or do you want uh, me to keep going? You can keep going. I'm going to okay. just warm up my, uh, my grill here while she's talking. Okay. And uh, we're going to put some chicken and pineapple first. Yummy. Uh, if you've ever done grilled fruits, uh, if you haven't, you should. Uh, any type of stone fruit like peaches, uh, or one of my favorites is pineapple. Mm -hmm. You do it all the time during the summer. Get fresh pineapple, or even even the canned slices if they're if they're canned in 100% juice. 
with no sugar added. You can use those. Uh, just adds another another level of flavor to your to your dish. Yeah, sometimes in the summer, I think pineapple is like the best dessert ever. It's just so sweet, especially once you caramelize it mm -hmm. on the grill. Mm, yummy. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about seasonings because we know that one of the big seasonings that we use out here in America is salt. Okay, and salt has, um, you know, is definitely a focus today um, in America. We uh, all are being tell told that we eat too much of it and we need to stop. So um, one of the first things that we need to try to do is try to stop using the salt shaker because you know what? there's already a lot of salt in those foods already. So stop using that salt shaker first and foremost. The second thing you want to do is stop um, buying a lot of convenience food products. And if any of you went on the shopping tour, you might have learned that sometimes on the perimeter of the store, that's where more of the fresh stuff is that you're going to have to make from scratch. And the stuff in the middle, that's the processed stuff. The stuff that they already put together for you um, that usually has a lot of salt in it. So try to use less convenience items. Um, choosing alternatives. And Rich touched on this a little bit uh, with uh, talking about uh, using some of those salt-free seasonings like Lowry's or Mrs. Dash. Other options are going to be like garlic powder instead of garlic salt. Yeah, same with the onion. Onion mm -hmm. powder, granulated or powder, both would work just fine. Uh, mm -hmm. instead of the garlic salt or onion salt. Mm -hmm. So my grill is hot. Okay, so, let's get started. Um, what I'm gonna do, I've got a little bit of extra virgin olive oil here. Uh, and if you see how much I'm gonna pour in, that's about all I'm gonna use. Um, Very little, like a teaspoon maybe, yeah. maybe less. Right, so I've got a boneless, skinless chicken breast. I'm gonna cook this first. Important to get your pan hot first. You want that sear to come on there right there. What that's going to do is help keep the juices in the chicken. That's kind of the biggest uh, uh, complaint about skinless chicken breasts is they get dry. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's all in how you cook it. Invest in a uh, cooking thermometer. Cook your chicken to 165 degrees. Uh, people tend to overcook chicken real, real easily mm -hmm. and that's one of the biggest things. 165 degrees, a hot pan, sear it on both sides, and you're going to have a, a perfect juicy chicken breast. Mm -hmm. And I'm also going to add in some pineapple slices. That's the first thing we're going to do. We're just going to do a plain, plain grilled chicken breast, add some pineapple to it. It's going to give it a little sweetness. Uh, that pineapple is going to caramelize in there a little bit with the natural sugars that come out of it, and uh, it turns out turns out great. Mm. So. All right. All right. All right. Other things that we can use for seasonings besides fruits, like pineapple, which can certainly add a lot of flavor. Um, pepper. Uh, anytime you want to use pepper, it's going to be okay. Um, unless it's something like a blend, like a lemon pepper. You know, you want to look at the ingredients because those seasoning bottles are going to have ingredients. And sometimes one of the ingredients is salt, even if it didn't say it in the title. You, so usually, watch for that. Yeah, usually it's the first <laughs> ingredient, even if it doesn't say it, like Jenna yeah. said in the title. Lemon pepper seasoning will have salt, pepper, and lemon zest yeah. in, the, in that order. So watch for that. Okay. All right, um, there's lots of other seasoning choices and there's certainly lots of different fresh herbs that we can use also. And we brought a couple examples here if you want right. to talk the, about them. One of the uh, two of the most popular that I think of uh, in cooking, got some fresh basil, real strong smell, uh, real prevalent in Italian cooking, a couple, uh, couple of leaves at the end of your sauce or um, on... Uh, even with, with the chicken, with the chicken on uh, bruschetta, which is mm. uh, fresh Roma tomatoes Yummy. and fresh basil on, uh, on maybe some French bread toasted. Mm -hmm. uh, that would work out really well. Another one is rosemary. Do a lot of rosemary with chicken or beef or pork. You can use it. It's very versatile. It's got a, a real nice aroma to it. Uh, don't be afraid of the, the fresh herbs. Mm -hmm. uh, there's plenty more to choose from at the grocery store. 
I did bring some cilantro along tonight too. I'm going to be cooking a stir fry with it. Um, oh, look at those nice grill marks. You got that? All right. Mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, with cilantro, <laughs> it's, a, it's a misconception that cilantro is only used for uh, like Latin cooking mm -hmm. or, or uh, Mexican dishes. Uh, not true. I use it in my stir fries as a real flesh, uh, fresh pop of flavor with maybe some citrus. Uh, I'm going to do a stir fry tonight with a little lemon juice uh, and cilantro. And it's just a complete different take on it. Instead of a heavy stir fry sauce, yeah. it'll be a, just a nice, light, light dish instead. Some other hints for adding um, or for seasoning foods. Uh, would be using uh, balsamic vinegars. Vinegars yes. in general have a nice tang to them that sort of resembles salt on the tongue, ta on the tongue or the palate. Um, and there's lots of different varieties of vinegars out there. Um, sometimes just spritzing vinegars on vegetables can be a great way to flavor them and you didn't add a single bit of salt. Right. Most all of them yeah. are salt too. Yeah, almost all of Same them. Same with uh, wine vinegars. Mm -hmm. uh, Champagne vinegars, red wine yeah. vinegars, things like that. Uh, you can find them in the grocery store right next to the fatty salad dressings. Yeah. You'll find the, the uh, different flavored vinegars. Yeah. All right, so we're to the grains and breads portion. Uh, so in the grains and breads section, it, the advice is really similar to a lot of the advice I'm going to be giving you, and that is to limit processed foods, okay? So we want to try to choose our grains um, less processed or more whole, if you will. Uh, instead of choosing white pasta, white flours, rice, white rice, these have all been processed to remove some of their components, okay? We want to in instead choose whole grain pastas, brown rice, whole wheat flours, whole grain breads. And 100% is really key when you're looking at these products because sometimes they can just say whole grain or contain some whole grains and it doesn't contain very much of those whole grains at all. So you really do have to be savvy when you're looking at those labels. The goal for whole grains or fiber in general is to get about 25 to 30 grams a day. And uh, fiber really uh, can be beneficial for our cholesterol lover levels, especially soluble fiber. That's where the Cheerios commercials come into play or oatmeal. Um, and fiber can also help keep you full longer. So if you have weight loss goals, sometimes uh, getting more fiber in the diet can really help you to achieve that goal because in between meals, you might not get that hungry. All right. We've got some more action over here going on, right. so let's so take a look. I, so I finished the chicken. Uh, like I said, I used a, a home-style grill that has uh, that you can use indoors. Puts the nice sear marks on it, so it looks you know looks appealing along with uh, tasting good. Mm -hmm. And the pineapples came out nice on top. I just put a little sprig of rosemary on top. One for a little garnish, kind of dress up your plate a little bit. Two. Just the smell of that, when it hits the hot food, Sounds it good. releases the, the oils that are uh, naturally in the herbs. And uh, just the aroma comes out, it just uh, makes it that much mm. that's more attractive to you. Well, and I think sometimes, don't they say that um, part of your sense of taste is through your sense of smell? Right. Smell? <laughs> yeah, definitely is through your sense of smell. And, and visually, too. If, yeah. it, if it looks good. Then, then it's more likely to it. taste it. Yeah. So now what I've done, I used about the same amount of olive oil. I put the salmon in the, in the pan. Now we're going to cook that. And what I did tonight, I brought along a little bit of maple syrup. We're just going to do a little bit of maple glaze right on top of the salmon once it's done cooking. Give it about an extra minute, and that syrup will caramelize on there. And it'll just give it a nice sweet flavor, something, something a little bit different where you don't have to go heavy with, with salt in order to get some, some flavor out of it. So salmon, uh, personally, I do mine about medium. I don't overcook it. It's one of those fish that you can cook. Medium, medium well, you don't have to cook it all the way. Uh, I know we saw albacore tuna before. That and ahi tuna. Ahi tuna you can cook medium rare, even rare, to sear the outside couple minutes on each side. Yeah. Oh, 
beautiful, beautiful grill marks on there. <laughs> it smells good too. So it's making me hungry. While while that side is cooking, we're just gonna pour on a little bit of maple syrup. And then we're gonna cover this up so we get that, that flavor intensified on there. And it's just gonna come out. Uh, you'll see it in a, in about a minute. It'll come out. <laughs> so. All right. Do you want to get started on something else, or? Uh, I'm gonna as soon as I shut the grill off. Okay. I'm gonna get the stir fry started. Okay. Uh, brought along what's called an induction cooker tonight, so we don't have to have an open flame in here, but on your stove top, just the same. Uh, what I'm gonna do here? I've got a little bit of toasted sesame oil. Uh, I like to use this because you're going to still get that flavor that you're looking for in a stir fry, um, but you don't have to use the, the soy sauce that's just loaded with sodium or a heavy stir fry sauce, which is the same. Yeah. Um, that's the, the misconception that stir fries, oh, it's all vegetables oh, and a little so healthy. fresh chicken, it's, it's healthy for you, but then you pile on the soy sauce. Uh, and all of a sudden you're up to two and three thousand milligrams of sodium yeah. for one dish. Yeah. Uh, which is easy to get to with a lot of the stir fry sauces that are out there. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to use a little bit of sesame oil. And again, same with the, with the grill, we're going to let that pan get hot. Uh, very important, we get the hot pan so you sear that, the, the protein that you're putting in there, whether it's shrimp or chicken or beef or pork, whatever you prefer. Uh, tonight we're going to be doing chicken again, but uh, whatever you prefer, you want to get the pan hot first so it sears right away to keep those juices in. Looks like we got chicken sliced in small thin strips. Right. Called a julienne slice. Mm -hmm. You can see from, from where you're sitting, it's sliced real thin, so it's going to cook real fast. Mm -hmm. And that's a that's, uh, a good way to do the stir fry. You can cook it fast, get your vegetables in there, because you don't want you don't want vegetables coming out mushy either. You want that little crispness to them. Nice. Now, does this? What temperature would they want to have their skillet on at home on uh, their stove? Uh, electric stove, I would say medium high, mm -hmm. uh, with the gas. Not not all the way up, but, but pretty high. And I'm going to add my vegetables right away because my chicken is very close to being done already. That's and that if quick. I, if I wait till the chicken is done, then it's going to start to overcook. So tonight I've got some shredded carrots, a little bell pepper, some zucchini, uh, grape tomatoes, and some broccoli. All right. All those colors are so good for us. Now the sesame oil, you can buy that with regular oils or in the Asian section? Uh, I've seen it in the Asian section. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe by the olive oils, I'm not okay. sure. But, uh, close to the end, I'd like to add just a little water. It'll help steam the vegetables. Get them, get them done for you. And now we're going to add a little bit of fresh cilantro. Give it that fresh flavor. Cilantro to me is one of the freshest mm -hmm. flavored herbs that are that's out there. Add your herbs right at the end if you're cooking with them, because you'll retain most of the flavor. Then. Yeah, they just get mushy if you add them too soon. And I like to do a little citrus with it. Yummy. A lemon juice, a little lime juice, maybe an orange, whatever, whatever you have handy. Um, it's there too, it's just going to give it that little bit of uh, fresh flavor that, uh, that goes so well. Look how beautiful that looks. And, nice. and literally, how long did that take? Minutes. Minutes and we're done. So, yeah. um, be, a, be a great, healthy meal, quick meal. Once you have it, uh, cut your vegetables ahead of time. Uh, very quick meal for you. 
How are steamer stuff doing? Our steamer. Done. Our vegetables are done. Nice. There too, uh, if you do have a steamer at home, you can play around with the time a little bit. If you like them a little bit more done, leave them in a minute or two longer. Um, however, however you like them. Whoops. Oop. And down. Um, Lost a cauliflower. All right. And we're going to serve that with the maple glazed salmon tonight. that was in the pan and we're going to pour it right over the top of the salmon. I can do this without... Which would certainly be easier if it wasn't a grill pan. Uh, yeah, you can move. Now I'm going to grab a napkin. It's a little warm. Oh, okay. And it reduced a little bit so it looks really good. That's all the flavor you need on there. Yeah, very simple to make. Uh, you see, none of this took us longer than, than five minutes to make. Uh, it would be a great, great meal for you. All right. Well, I'm going to keep going then. Okay. Dairy products. Uh, uh, as far as our dairy products go, uh, we usually want to try to choose skim or 1% milk. Um, instead of whole milk or 2%, okay? Um, they're gonna be more than 30% of their calories from fat, so that is greater than our daily goal, so that's why we wanna make these other healthier choices. Some substitutes that we can make in recipes, instead of utilizing things like heavy cream, um, we can sometimes use evaporated skim milk. Um, we can also uh, even use skim milk at times in cream soups as we've found um, as we try to make some recipes healthier at work. So um, sometimes you can thicken sauces with a little bit of cornstarch and still get away with using a lower fat milk. All right, trying fat free or I usually recommend low fat um, products or light products instead of the full fat free products. And, but you can use fat-free if you're really trying to reduce calories. Substitute uh, non-fat plain yogurt instead of sour cream. You can usually do that. Um, sometimes Greek yogurt can even have a better effect because it is a little bit thicker. And choosing reduced fat cheeses when they're available. And some of your cheeses, like, uh, like the white cheeses like mozzarella and Swiss, they tend to be lower in fat than um, the cheddars of the world. So watch for those ones. Uh, fruits and vegetables, they're definitely going to be best when purchased fresh. Uh, frozen is also a great choice, but like Rich said earlier, you do have to watch those steamer bags and other kinds of bags because uh, they will have added salt. So um, if you do have to buy canned, choose low sodium or no added salt. You can rinse them, but you're still not going to remove all the salt. Some of it's just already in that food. And you're losing a lot of the nutrients, too, when you pour all that liquid out. Because a lot of our vitamins and minerals are water-soluble, and so that's why we want to steam them. You know, when we're steaming something, we're using very little water, so the food isn't coming in contact with that water and allowing the vitamins and minerals to leach out into it. So that's why we like the microwaving and steaming instead of just boiling our vegetables straight. Okay? And we want to try to eat our fruits and vegetables without added fat. So. All right. Meal planning. You guys have all seen my plate, right? Um, I think that's introduced for, to you in this. And um, that I think this is one of my uh, best philosophies that have come out. It's a little bit easier than that food guide pyramid that we used to see. It actually tells you how you're going to get all those servings of fruits and vegetables and, and grains and proteins in. Uh, so really try to um, incorporate the my plate idea, even if it's in uh, you know, a stir fry. I mean, it, our portions should be similar to that if you had them separated out on your plate. 
Other questions to ask yourself is if you're consuming a variety of the food groups, because you do need a variety of foods because different foods are going to offer different nutrients for our body. And we really need all of those food groups um, to, to live the healthiest lifestyle. Uh, will this meal look appetizing is another question, because of course we eat with our eyes. Um, so make sure it looks good. And if it usually meals that look good have a lot of color. And color is key, as we'll find out in another slide. And make sure you're using the right portion sizes. Okay? All right, cooking with color. Different colored foods offer different nutrients. Okay? So we want to have the greens and the oranges and the reds. We need all of those different colors to make sure that we're getting the right combination of vitamins and minerals. So don't just eat green vegetables. Eat all different colors and experiment and try to get a combination of those. Plus, as I said earlier, they're more appealing. All right, um, these are some portion size examples. There are others. I'm sure you've gotten some of those. Um, a deck of cards for a piece of meat. That's about three ounces. That's not very big. Um, one cup of cooked rice would be about the size of a tennis ball. So sometimes these are good ways that we can, or good references that we can keep in mind when we're measuring out our foods instead of getting out that measuring cup. Um, the plate is also a good representation. If we have a small, like eight to nine inch plate, that's what the my plate is based off, not a big, huge 12 inch plate, okay? All right. Um, one teaspoon of butter is about the size of one dice. So if that helps you to um, figure out what those portion sizes are supposed to be, it's a good tool. All right. And I think that's pretty much it that we had. Do you guys have questions or anything that you have? We talk about a lot of things. I know there's a lot of um, misinformation out there, you know, on, in the news media and on the internet. So if you have any questions about anything that um, you've seen, we'd be happy to answer those. And we have some brownies here that we'd like you to try too. Yes, a healthier version of a brownie. <laughs> um, there's uh, ingredients in there that are a little bit different. Uh, normally I have people guess, but uh, we're just going to have you sample. Would you want to take Sure, two I'll there? take two out. There you go. Uh, these are made with black beans. <laughs> the, uh, You're uh, supposed to try it before he tells oh, you. Oh, did you see it? Is well, there's a lot of different yeah. there's a lot of different recipes for black bean brownies. So, this is one of them. There is still some chocolate in there. There's an egg in there. There's some nuts in there, but uh, no flour. Mm -hmm. uh, a little no, bit of vanilla. No butter. No, uh, no there's butter. A, it's just a different. <laughs> You may have a different little texture feel in your mouth from it, but still, I think it's, uh, it, it's very tasty. Yeah, and beans add a lot of extra fiber and protein, um, so those, are, those can be a great addition. We can even use beans and we can add beans to all kinds of our, foo our foods. Bean pure purees can be utilized just like some of those um, fruit, the substitutes like the squash purees and applesauce purees. You can use bean purees also. Um, but you can add beans to soups and chilies, and they're, they're cheap. They're and cheap. And that's what we did with the brownies. We just yeah. took the black beans uh, once they were cooked and run them through a food processor to get a puree. Mm -hmm. And then you can add it, add it to. Anybody just like you would taste be, them? Just like you can taste the beans? Applesauce. No. So no. I like it better. Absolutely. It's good stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I love black beans and I love brownies. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you can have them together. <laughs> um, your grill that you have, is that just from any local store? Yeah, I picked this up at Target. Mm -hmm. uh, the only was, grill I've ever seen is the, you know, the George Foreman grill, you know, which is yeah, a different concept, it seems. A little different concept. This one I like uh, a little bit better than that yeah. because you can, uh, you can steam in here because it's got the grates on the bottom uh, where you get the nice grill marks, but you can also put the cover on and put a little bit of water in the bottom and steam your vegetables in there. Uh, so it, it's a little more versatile than, uh, than like the George Foreman. So, and I think it was right around $20 yeah. at Target. These so, aren't expensive no? things that we're using here. Uh, when you do cook with, uh, I always recommend nonstick pans like, uh, like this here 
for, for your cooking so you can cook it quick. You don't need a lot of oil. Uh, invest in a decent pan. A decent one, yes, a um, good one. That, that's uh, uh, a big thing. A lot of the, the cheaper ones that you can buy a pan like this for $6, you're better off not because it's a bad coating that's going to start flaking off. It's not going to be a, a good nonstick pan that you can get hot. You know, spend the $20 or whatever, you know, on a, on a good pan. It'll last you a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and, and any of these dishes I wanted to bring up before when we were talking about the yeah. serving sizes, uh, you could serve this with some brown rice serve a little whole wheat pasta with the salmon, you know, if you want to uh, complete that plate out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with eating it just as is, yeah. but if you want to add that starch, do a whole grain starch. Mm -hmm. um, Quinoa, to, uh, to add something. To yeah. Now, if we were to be grilling uh, something like salmon on the grill outside, what mm -hmm. temperature would we want to put the grill on? Uh, if it's a gas grill, I'd still go medium high. Okay because you want to get that sear on that. Uh, so. And if your family says the salmon is too fishy, <laughs> um, lemon juice or, or what's the uh, you can You can marinate in some lemon juice. Um, sometimes, yeah, sometimes salmon can be. Uh, if, if they're dead set against it, go with tuna. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's going to eat more like a steak, uh, like a beef steak, and you're not going to have that that uh, fish aroma to it. Hmm. So a good a good tuna steak will yeah, will will fake them out. <laughs> I like orange on my salmon. I think that's orange, a good yes. orange. I like that. A little orange juice too. You can marinate in orange juice. Mm -hmm. Question: sure. Is there a difference in the plant-based omega-3 versus the fish oil? There is a difference. Um, that's why to get the right combination of EPA and DHA, or the and they're big long words that I don't even remember at this point. Uh, to get the right combination, you need to have both, but you can't just do plant based because the most most of the EPA and DHA is going to come from the fish oil based. So some people will be on a flaxseed oil supplement, and usually you're not getting the right combination to have the best benefits that you could have from your supplement. And even when I'm talking about supplements, usually I would recommend trying to get it from your fish or um, from whole foods because whole foods are always going to be better than any kind of supplement out there. Um, some of the recent studies on fish oil supplements don't show any effect. I don't know if we don't know why that is. You know, it could be non compliance with the treatment. It could be that there's other things within the fish that work together with that fish oil to have that effect, or the, the cholesterol lowering effects, or those beneficial things. Not to say that it doesn't work for a lot of people, it does, but um, you can't always see it in studies. So, yeah. I, I take fish oil. Uh -huh. I just discovered uh, it contains a lot of cholesterol. Um, it shouldn't. It's like 25 milligrams. What kind of fish oil are you taking? Are you just using like a fish oil capsule or are you using... And then huh. I was looking in the store and I see that, that they have bottles that said no cholesterol. Okay. No cholesterol. Okay. I had never paid any attention to that. Well, I wouldn't have... Yeah, maybe you want to choose a different selection. Um, and one that does particularly say that it contains... 1,000 milligrams of EPA and DHA because those are the really the two um, types of oil that fish oils that you need. Um, the other sometimes the fish oil supplements that we're buying on the shelf don't have the right combination. They might even be from other fish besides the smash fish, the salmon, the tuna, the mackerel, the herring. Um, krill is one of them that sometimes you can utilize to get good fish oil. Um, if it doesn't say what source, you don't know what kind of fish it comes from. So, and that's one of the big problems with the, the whole supplement industry. So we do have to be very cautious, cautious when we're choosing our supplements and make sure we get a reputable brand. So yeah. is that 1,000 milligrams of each of those? EPA and DHA together. Oh, together. Yeah. And they should be labeled with that. If it doesn't say, then likely it does not have the right combination. 
sometimes they'll say a thousand milligrams on the front and then you'll look on the other side and it's like 300 EPA and DHA. So you do have to watch. Is one more important than the other? They should be in, they, I think they're pretty much in equal amounts. I, I'm not totally sure if you need one more than the other. Usually they're written together. <laughs> There's a couple of others like ALA and all those, and that's what's in the flax seed oil. So that's why flax and those plant sources. Any other questions? All right. Yeah. Actually, I have a question. Sure. Okay. I love to <coughs> cook the way uh, the chef has. However, my husband is a meat and potatoes guy. And uh -huh. It makes it extremely difficult some days to cook healthy for him, too. Mm hmm. Yeah. He doesn't like his vegetables at all? or uh, Some he'll eat. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he'd rather have like the fried chicken, that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. I've been really been trying to explain to them for over a year, okay, not so much of the high fat foods, uh, mm -hmm. the bacon, the fried yeah. chicken. Right. Um, you know, what's a person to do? I guess you just have to, you know, if, if, if that's, I mean, I wouldn't cater to, to the, uh, the high fat tendency. I would just, are you the one that does the cooking? Yes, I do 95% of the so, time. So if you didn't offer the fried chicken or the fried stuff, would he eat the, the grilled stuff? And the, would he eat the healthier stuff? Or would he go out and buy the other? Uh, what would he do? This way. <laughs> when we go grocery shopping, he'll still buy like the box of the banquet fried chicken. Okay. Which I won't touch the stuff. <laughs> right. I'll, I would rather have like say grilled fish or grilled chicken mm -hmm. or extremely lean beef like say only 5% fat. Yes, yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, well, as an alternative to the fried chicken, you could do some, uh, uh, and you'd have to do this without him looking. <laughs> <laughs> Take some uh, boneless, skinless chicken breasts, and uh, there's a, a, a breadcrumb out there called a panko breadcrumb. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what you can do is bread those chicken breasts with the panko breading. Uh, use a little a little egg or skim milk to uh, uh, to get it to, to stick on the chicken breast. Before you put it in the oven, use a little cooking spray and just spray over the top of the breadcrumbs and that'll crisp that up a little bit better once you bake it in the oven. Try that one time. Maybe maybe he would be okay with that. All right, you yeah, know, because he um, likes the fried fish, too. Sure, mm -hmm. So, sure. you know, I'll make it as a treat, like, maybe three times a year for him. But mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, hey, I would love to eat that stuff, too, but I yeah. know it's not that good. So. Right. Yeah, you just got to keep working on him. Yeah, yeah, and try some different seasonings Keep working with it. on it. Uh, I know Laurie's has a new one out called <laughs> Salt Free 17. I'm not sure if it's available in stores yet. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of a kicked up Mrs. Dash's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm uh, familiar with Mrs. Dash okay. and just all your good basic <coughs> spices. Yeah. He um, has like acid reflux okay. and different oh. problems that way. So, I mean, okay. if I make like, say, chili, I can only put in like about an eighth of a teaspoon of chili powder. Okay. Anything more than that, and it seems to really bother him. Sure. Yeah. Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be spicy then. No. I mean, right. use your onion powders, your garlic powders. Those should be okay. A um, little, uh, little black pepper or white pepper to, uh, mm -hmm. to get a little bit of uh, heat seasoning in there. Oh. And mix that into your breadcrumbs and then, and then bread it with that and yeah. try it sometime. Yeah, because if I try to put pepper in stuff, and I mean just the bare minimum, he's like, just oh, it's too like hot, it. it's too hot. Oh, okay. okay. Well, then stay away so. from that. Yeah, that's a, that's okay. a hard one. You know. I know he has trouble with like the sure. tomato based uh, yep. sauces. Sure. So yeah, tomato based I sauces can definitely make be. make it, but <clears throat> I try to do it as healthy as I can, so. Sure. Sure. Try the, try the chicken that way once. See if he likes it. Yeah. Okay. But remember to put a little bit of cooking spray on it, and that'll crisp up right. those crumbs a little bit better. Thanks. Sure. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Do you have any suggestions for snacks? Oh. <laughs> yeah, you because know, like at night, 
Oh, before bed type snacks? Well, you know, sometimes uh, like a, sometimes one of the best snacks I think of is, is popcorn. Now, we can't just buy any old popcorn. It needs to be a, you know, reduced fat or trans fat free popcorn or a low sodium popcorn, air popped preferably. But if you have an air popper and you can pop popcorn without all that stuff, you can have a lot of popcorn for a very low amount of calories. And it also adds a great amount of fiber. Otherwise, um, fruits and vegetables are always great snacks. Um, uh, like a, something more fun. <laughs> something more fun than fruits and vegetables. What, what about uh, like the new, uh, the uh, puff chips or they do rice, have some. They chips. do have some of those. You still have to watch some of your sodium in some of those, or even the portion size. Because if they come in, if they don't come in those individual serving sizes, the tendency might to be to get more um, than the serving size. Uh, so those are good options. Uh, you can do yogurt. Uh, you could do um, maybe some, you know, like a whole grain bread and. A little bit of peanut butter. What about suggestion? what about like the uh, like you said Cheetos? You yeah. know, granted, not a really good thing to put no. in your body. Yeah. But what if you stuck to the portion size? If you just couldn't get away from them, um, put the bag away, but but bring out the half a cup. Yeah, of Cheetos yeah. If you're gonna do, if you're gonna, if you're gonna splurge on something like that, just portion out your amount and put the bag back in the cupboard. That's always the the, the best rule of thumb. Never eat out of the bag. <laughs> Can I just share yeah, about sure. Those Cheetos. So I was at a sure. basketball game and there was baked Cheetos and there was regular Cheetos, right? Mm -hmm. So you think mm -hmm. you're gonna all pick the baked Cheetos? If you look at the bag. The baked Cheetos bag is actually the individual bag. It was actually a bigger bag. So the, the regular Cheetos had 200 calories in it. So you're going to eat the whole bag, right, with your concessions meal. Um, and then the baked Cheetos had 250 calories and because it was a bigger bag, technically, yeah. probably. So, you know, what do you do? You eat the baked, you think you're doing better. It's a single serving bag, right? We can eat the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, you're getting 50 more calories. Sure. Yep. And calories may not be everything. I mean, that certainly that might have been a better product. It might have been a more natural product, but no Cheetos are natural. <laughs> Let's yeah, just be no, serious here. Cheetos are natural. Yeah. <laughs> They're on the Cheeto tree. <laughs> but if you absolutely must, you know, if you can't get away from that, don't a natural do it Cheeto. Your, and, and make sure that you're, you know, using a, a proper portion. Yeah. You know, like Janaea said, put yeah. the bag back in the cupboard. Yeah. Some people, you know, I've seen I've seen some great ideas where people will even make fruits and vegetables more fun by, you know, um, like yogurt dip banana. You know, putting that, you know, maybe cutting, dicing up some banana and coating it in yogurt and putting it in the freezer and then bringing it out later and it's it's completely different than it was before. Or freezing grapes. Something just as simple as freezing grapes can completely change what was just a grape before is now this delectably delicious melt in your mouth um, little morsel. So, I mean, there certainly are ways to get a little bit more creative with the snacks besides just plain fruits and vegetables. Right. Or, um, or take yeah. your fresh fruits and cut them bite size and uh, make little shish kebabs on sure. them. Sure. Yeah. You know, and you do those ahead of time during the day, and then at night you got this colorful tree of, of fruit that you can pull out. So. So the visual part of it makes it a little more fun, yeah. you know, instead of the, the salty chips that mm -hmm. we all think are fun. Yeah. How do you get a husband to eat fruits when the only thing he'll eat is like maybe a quartered apple or something like maybe a handful of grapes. That's about it for his choices. I mean, I'll eat a wide variety of fruits, and mm -hmm. sure, it doesn't have to be like a whole grapefruit at one time, but I've tried to encourage him. Yeah. I've even put it on his plate, and he'll just say, well, please don't put it on my plate anymore. Yeah. Well, in, in those cases, um, sometimes the only way to get them in is to sneak them in in purees. I mean, you could certainly, um, there's lots of cookbooks out there that, there's one called Deceptively Delicious. There's a whole bunch of them out there that um, uh, incorporate the use of purees. So you have all these purees, like a plum puree and an apple puree, and, and you just put them in things like 
brownies and spaghetti sauce. You put in extra stuff that, that wasn't already there. So maybe for you, that might be the only way that you can get him to get in some of those other things. Um, it does take a lot of time and commitment to make those purees to have them on hand. Um, but if you're willing to do that to make sure he gets the right nutrition, that may be the only way. I, I think I have one in my office right now. It's called how to cheat on your husband or cheat on your man in the kitchen or something like that. <laughs> and it's all these, um, these recipes um, that are man friendly and um, there's even like chicken wing recipe in there I think and it, and it utilizes a fruit, uh, a fruit or a vegetable puree in the sauce or, or something along those lines. So there are tricky ways to get it in if you know you just can't because you can't force them to eat it. You can't. So. Hope that helps. <sighs> Anything else? All right. Thank you very much. Let's give it up.